Yeah, solar panels, solar wiring, power stations, 3D printers. I try to cover a little bit of everything, don't we? That's what happens in a garage, you know? It's like, it's, it's life. I uh, did some woodworking last week and really enjoyed it. In fact, I, I got thinking about it. I was like, you know, I really love the challenge of some woodwork for a change. You know, it just, it gets you out of this. <laughs> and I had to do a cabinet joint and I was thinking we should probably take a look at that because there are some, uh, there's some dirty tricks that I won't do and there's a right way to do it. And a lot of people will tell you, if you're going to do cabinet work, one of the most basic things, even if it's cheap, and we'll build a cheap, the cheapest one today ever out of scrap and whatever, uh, we'll build a, a shooting board for a cabinet joint and just take a look at the ways you can get around that. There's a few people who will probably say like, you know, what, what's the point of a shooting board? But, so let's get into it. Uh, Recently, someone said to me, well, if you have a good saw with a really good blade, you know, you don't need a shooting board. <laughs> yeah, they, they really said that. <laughs> and I have seen, like I said, some dirty tricks in the industry. So let's take a look at this basic uh, cabinet joint and see how a shooting board will fix the problem, but then we're gonna make a shooting board. I've got some scrap lumber here, and we're gonna put a shooting board together today. It's gonna to be cheap, 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 lowest cost uh, plane I could find, uh, scrap lumber from my barn. We didn't, yeah, no money was spent to do this one. <laughs> well, here's the uh, situation right here. Uh, this, is, this is an old piece uh, from what I replaced. This is just another piece of scrap, too, that came out of the job, but uh, what you can see here, this was cut with a very expensive uh, 120 tooth blade on a saw. Everything was you know, taken care of and gone through very slowly, carefully cut, and you can still see that we really don't have much of a joint there. In fact, it looks pretty gappy, and you know, if I screw around with it a little bit, I, I can kind of try to make it tighter, but that's not really a proper cabinet joint. Now let's take a look at a shooting board joint. Of the same piece of wood, just the other end of it up to here and look at this that wood almost looks like a you know after you stain it that thing would almost look like it was one piece going right through you'd almost not see this right here at all but this is done on a shooting board yeah that's done with that's done with an expensive saw blade and i think the shooting board will always outperform the blade it just will it's going to give you the better joint now to fix this uh there's couple of other dirty, rotten tricks that I've seen in the industry. And one of them is to take the board and put a slight angle back here, cutting it back, so that the very top here is, is and I'll hold the board up on an angle a little bit and bring it together like that. So you get a nice, tight, you know, <laughs> yeah, like that. But I'm holding an angle because they cut it back here. And that, you know, it's a little bit of a cheat. And actually you end up leaving a gap back here, filling up with glue and whatever. It's really a dirty way to do it. The other way is to come up like this and then sand a little, if your wife is watching especially, sand a little bit, mix it with some, uh, you know, uh, wood glue, some sand, sawdust from sanding this, and then stuff it in here to try to fill that joint in so it sort of disappears. But ideally, a proper cabinet maker, you know, he's gonna come up, he's gonna put it through a, uh, shooting board and he's going to end up with a joint like that where there's you almost cannot you have to look really hard to even see where the two pieces of lumber came together and that's why a shooting board is such a cool thing okay so let's make a shooting board now we've got the materials here uh there's really not that much involved but i had to go through my scrap because i'm not spending any money on this project <laughs> And one of the things that they like to use for a base is memeline. And memeline is really nice, it's flat, it's straight. It seems to hold its uh, structure, so it makes a good shooting board base. It's also quite heavy. This one here has uh, some kind of fancy wood grain finish on it because it's a piece of scrap from a cabinet that I had tore up at some point in time. Also, I tore up an old table at one time and it had um, this right here, which is uh, maple. Yeah, nice maple hardwood. So you need a couple of pieces. You should use hardwood. I would use a piece of pine if necessary. I don't really care that much. Uh, the hardwood is just a little fancier, whatever. And it is nice to have the hardwood if you have it. If you can't find it in your scrap pile, then you know maybe some something else. You know, I, actually, I could even see poplar or something like that for this project because 
You have a leg underneath this, which is gonna to lock to your table when you're using your shooting board. You're gonna have a stop where you're gonna be using your uh, planer to go against your work in order to get nice and straight. Also, the other thing I found was for $15, it was on clearance at Lowe's, was this uh, cobalt plane, which we're gonna to use today, which is pretty nasty. <laughs> but like I said, this is, keep in mind, I just wanted everybody at home to understand, this is as cheap as I could possibly make and set this thing up because I really don't think you should go out and spend a lot of money on a shooting board. Now you can, there are some awesome, you know, uh, third party shooting boards available out there that you can order off the internet, but that's not what we're about today. Today what we're about is just make a scrap cheap one that does a nice job and that's all we want. So first thing to do is cut this up. So let's get some dimensions started on this. Dimensionally, this is just the base. It should be like one inch. This is three quarter stuff because that's all I could find. We're gonna cut it the average for a hobbyist, you know, size. And I'm gonna cut 12 by 24 out of this piece and that will become our base for our shooting board. So let's get that started so we can get to the next item. We've cut all our pieces, so let's go over what we've got. Obviously this was the first piece cut. This is the 12 by 24. This is the base for our shooter board. Uh, off camera, I had a piece of uh, quarter inch plywood. So again, just some scraps that's been laying around. It's kind of pretty looking. It looks like it's good on both sides. I don't know what the deal was. Again, it came out of some scraps. I don't know where it came from, but I cut this, okay, 10 and a half by 20. And the reason is it's going to sit in here on the shooter board like this. Uh, now this one here is really rough looking and it's going to be great. This is just a stop block. This is going to go under the back end here to stop the shooter board so it doesn't move around on you while you're using it. Now the next one is really important. So we've got a nice straight side here. The rest of this is kind of rough. This is going to go at the top here and this is uh, going to sit like this. And yeah, we cut it too long. And, and uh, the, the, this is going to come through like this with our uh, <laughs> cheap plane. <laughs> so we got to put some stuff together, throw some screws together. Uh, that should have been an inch and a half shorter, but that's okay. Uh, even if it's hanging out like that, actually, it's kind of like, you know, who cares? And also I got a countersink bit with a drill bit so that we can put some screws in from underneath to hold all of this together. But we got to get this glued down and clamped in place and that's going to take a while. So I'm going to smear some glue all over this thing and glue it down because eventually when we come back to this, this piece has got to be square to this block. That's, you know, sort of, you know, that's the whole reason you're doing this is to get everything squared up so when you cut with this, you get a beautiful job. One thing about a job like this, you never have enough clamps. <laughs> uh, we've laid the board out. I clamped in the center first with a board through here, got it squeezed down real good, and it was like, you know what, it's doing good, so we went ahead and moved the clamps to the outside and just put some pressure on everything. This will have to sit for a little bit and then we'll come back. Now I took the clamps off because the glue has is, is been about an hour, so the glue is, I like that glue, it's pretty much set up. I mean, it's gonna take 24 hours to set up, but uh, at this point, uh, normally what I would do is run this through the uh, planer, yeah, the uh, thickness planer, and just sort of just touch the top of this guy before we get into it. But because of the show and the time and everything, we're kind of going to skip on that. I've checked my 90 up here to make sure that everything here is absolutely, you know, dead 90 because that's what we want, you know, because that's all going to be, that's what's going to make or break the tool, I guess. But the other thing uh, I've got to look at is I'm going to run some screws back here for, for this right here. This is going to be your lock and I'm going to just countersink some screws back here. Normally you, you sort of hide the screws or even run in from the back because you've got nice thick memoline to deal with. I don't have that, so we're dealing with what I have, what's what's available on hand, and an example. You can make yours a lot better than mine. <laughs> yeah, hey, go ahead, yeah, have at it. <laughs> so we're just gonna put some screws in here. Yeah, okay, we're back, and I'm just gonna drive a couple of uh, drywall screws. Ooh, geez, easy, easy boy, easy. <laughs> drywall screws. In. Yeah, yeah, that caught nice. Actually. Those two screws will probably do the job for what I'm doing, but uh, let's put another one over here. And that's pretty good. 
Yeah, maybe another one here. This is, uh, actually I need one up here is what I need. Yeah, probably another one right in this spot. Just to absolutely catch it. Yeah, we'll just drive some screws and we're just, this is just a like a, a stop rest for the board. So it's, it, uh, yeah, you can be as fancy or whatever you'd like as you want with that. Now, the next part of the fiasco is this guy right here. And this has to be set, or should at least be set in line with this. So, yeah, and actually we could glue this in and, oh, and check the side you're using because that's the wrong side. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it just gets better around here, don't it? <laughs> So now, uh, I need to probably, now these, this one here, the screws will come in from the back. So what I need to do is clamp this in place and then drive my screws. But we flipped her over, I'll put a block back here so everything is all nice and flat while we're working on this. This is actually the most, you know, part of the important part of this whole block method. I put one screw in already and I'm lined up. And now all I gotta do is line up for the other screw. And then after that, you can kind of you pretty much know where you're going to have to be, but yeah. And I like, I like this idea of just putting some screws in the back here because I can take this block off and change it or something if I want to in the future. So, just two screws today. Yep, it's because of YouTube. Alright, so, we now theoretically have completely finished. Yep, that's our, there it is. Here's our board, <laughs> the shooting board. Okay, so we've got our shooting board set up. I've got my lock back here, so this is locked to the table this way. So as I press my body against this, this is actually just absolutely held in spot. Now I'm gonna take my plane, lay it down like this, and just run it, run it through like this. Just make sure that everything is absolutely smooth. The pressure I'm doing those, I'm keeping is kind of like a 45 degree angle. I'm kind of like keeping the plane up tight to this, but I'm also keeping it on the bottom here, tight down here. So it's kind of a balancing act a little bit, but you just run it back and forth. And as you can hear, nothing is happening. And let's take a, yep, nasty old end here. And we're gonna bring our plane up first and kind of put our board up against it, pull back. Yep, did you hear that? Yeah, it's taking just that little tiny bit off, but it's squaring this thing up so it's gonna be absolutely more precise than any uh, saw blade, yeah, that uh, you can come up with. This is, you know, shooter board is just absolutely the way to go. And you can hear that nice crunchy, you know, it's taking, the, uh, taking it off, just shaving it down a little bit at a time. Doing a really nice job. And in fact, I can even see there was a bit of an angle here and it's taking that angle out of it. Yep, nice. Okay. And you can hear it. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and what that's doing, as you can see from the top down, is starting to get into the plywood here, this piece. And it's just starting to shave it down nice and straight and smooth. Uh, let's get another piece of wood and put that up against that and you just have a look to see how it butts to something. This is a bit rough cut, this piece here. This is the one we just ran through the shooter board and look at that. I mean, look at that joint. That is about as pretty as it's going to get. And if you don't see the difference of why this looks as good as the other, don't go into cabinet making. It's not for you. <laughs> I'll pull my clamps up, I guess. So what did we learn today? We learned how to not make a shooter board <laughs> or we learned how to make a real cheap one. But even a cheap piece of scrap thrown together like this is going to give you, it did, it gave me awesome results and it gave me exactly what I was looking for, for a shooter board, just to give that, that nice crisp edge for when you're doing, you know, well, cabinet is one thing, but anytime you're doing woodworking and you're putting something together and you want it really precise, this is, this is old as, you know, old as carpentry, but it's still, it's just the, one of the best things out there and it doesn't cost, well this was just scrap and a $15 plane and it's still giving me a better cut than what I'm gonna get out of my $500, you know, saw. So, there you go. Hey, thank you so much for watching Coffee and Tools Place. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell. There's your stop block, it's just a piece of crap and you know, there's your other block and there's, there it is, right there, just, yep, beautiful. I'm out of here. Over and out.